Hey everyone, it's Adios Amigo, and I'm bringing you a review and comparison of the entry line of Grado X series headphones. I have on the desk the SR60X and the SR80X. And from all objective measures, they're almost identical. The 60 and the 80X both have dynamic drivers with the same sensitivity, the same impedance, the same frequency response, and their drivers are matched within the same dB according to both marketing. The only difference I could find between these two headphones, according to Grado, is that they put pre-de-stressed drivers in the 80X, and they don't have any similar claim for the 60X, and that's it. That's the only thing I could find that was different. I'm not sure what de-stressing means, to be honest, and um, yeah, I, I, their marketing told me absolutely no other differences. So I was more or less expecting that the 80s would sound identical to the 60s, and that was not the case. So there is a price difference between these two units. I'll throw that up on the screen. And... Just looking from the outside, they're more or less identical. The same headband, which is half decent, the same adjustability on the cups. Um, they have the same kind of cup design, just this large piece of foam covering the driver, plastic uh, driver housings, very lightweight. And it's so lightweight, in fact, that these very thick braided cables down at the bottom are so stiff and weighted that they will just pull the headphone and cups all over the place. And they don't really give you a ton of length along the yoke. So the splitter will end probably right about the nape of your neck or where your collarbone is in the middle. And it's very uncomfortable to wear on both of these. So, uh, in addition, for people who wear glasses, like I do, I found that they were very uncomfortable to wear with glasses. The cables were just a pain to deal with. I tried letting them straighten out over time to take some of the stress off of them. And no matter what I did to try and prepare these to wear, they were uncomfortable. So already off the bat, it's kind of a, a tick against them from my point of view as a glasses wearing person. But in terms of the sound, the SR60X kind of sounds like the caricature of the Grado house sound. Everyone always kind of explains Grado as having this very sort of energetic, meant for li live music, not particularly great in the technicalities, but there's a lot of energy, bright, grainy, you know, well, at least on the lower end models. And that's all true for me on the 60X. I found... Well, generally speaking, I found that vocals actually sound pretty decent. There is a spike somewhere in the vocal range, I'm guessing around 2000 hertz, where higher pitched male vocals and female vocals have a spike that hurts. In a lot of ways, it sort of reminds me of the AKG K712 Pro. And the Pro was like right on the line of whether or not it was too much you know, it was painful or it was like right in the sweet spot and it sounded really exciting and sparkly and just really fun to listen to for female vocals. This has a similar thing where sometimes it sounds good and sometimes it's too much. And uh, I mean, that's true for both of these, but more of a problem for the SR60. I found that guitar sounds good on both of these, but the SR60... The guitar has to be somewhat natural. It has to be cleanly driven. It has to be an acoustic. It doesn't do well with overdriven guitars. The stage on the 60X gets congested very quickly, especially with thick sounding instruments. And when that happens, everything gets jumbled up into it. The drums get jumbled up, the guitar gets jumbled up, the vocals get jumbled up, and everything just sounds congested. Uh, the staging on it is 
I would say inadequate. It's not particularly deep. It's not particularly wide. The imaging is pretty much left, right, and center. And it just doesn't impress really in any of these uh, technicalities. I found that male vocals might be okay if they're a little bit on the lower end. Same with females. Plosives are still a problem. Uh, when you hear the hard S or X sounds, you will hear a sort of graininess to the sound. It's very unpleasant. Um, cymbals are very splashy on this. It's kind of an ongoing problem whether or not the drums are going to kind of drown out the rest of the song with sibilants. The, the cymbals or crash or ride all of them can just sort of ev eviscerate everything else that's going on in the song. So I'm not particularly a fan of the way that it does staging. There's no real separation between the layers. Everything sounds like it's right on top of one another. And the one thing I can say is that because it is so treble heavy, you do get a lot of the details from recording as long as it's not being drowned out by other things. Now, some things that kind of stick out for me as to my listening on this. Again, a lot of headphones seem to be having problems with some of the Japanese rock songs I listen to. Again, 04 Limited Sazabis. The song is called Squall. The time I have written is 2 minutes and 20 seconds into the song. And... It's got drums playing, it's got some energetic vocals going, it's got some hard guitar going, and everything just sounds like it's squashed together in a ball of sound. There's not any kind of separation, there's not any kind of differing distance between the instruments, and it just feels congested and overwhelmed. And you do get a lot of the sibilants coming across in the, the drums and again in the vocals. Elenium, on the re a record Ascend, the song is called Hold On, at 26 seconds into the song, a di a, I think it's a digital drum kit, gets added into the, to the mix. And up until that point, there is sort of a distance between the vocals and the, and the instrumental going on. But when the drums kick in, it feels like it's right in front of you, and, and ahead of the vocals ahead of the instruments, and it's just this super distracting, sibilant thing going on that's kind of blocking everything else. And you get kind of a similar problem uh, with graininess in the female vocals. I have the timestamp on that at 40 seconds in the song, especially because the vocalist is starting to hit higher notes at that point. It just... There's something about the treble peaks that just really set my ears off. To me, it's graininess, but to someone else, it might be a different experience. Maybe it's just, I'm being overwhelmed by the sibilance. I don't know. But it's really unpleasant. Um, that also happens with hard snare hits. I notice that when they really hit the snare hard, you get that resounding sound. It just, ugh, it's nasty. To me, it's just not pleasant at all and sort of the finest point on the guitar issue and the congestion is the band state champs album the finer things and the song is elevated at one minute and 35 seconds in they kind of bring all the instruments out together and it has a hard time dealing with the combination of a high energy guitar line that's pretty dirty high energy drum line, high energy vocals. It just feels really crowded, again, with the particularly sibilant sounds. It sounds on the grainy side. And the, and the cymbals, again, just sound really splashy in this particular segment. And so when I first listened to the SR60s, I sort of was dejected about what I should expect about the 80s. I thought, you know, the, the drivers are the same, the specs are the same. If the only difference is that these use de-stressed drivers and these don't, I'm probably not in for a good time. And to my surprise, that's not true. Uh, it does have a lot of similar, there's a lot of similarities between them. They do both tend on the bright side. They do both have 
problems with the vocal spike and sometimes instrumental around the 2k hertz there's like there's a peak there i think somewhere um and in some ways it's actually worse because the 60 just has a high treble period i noticed on the 80s there's a little bit more warmth to the very high end so the 2k peak actually stands out a little bit more to me there is a bit more bass to the 80 but the important thing for me is that there's a bit more depth and layering so that when you get to those same parts of the songs i mentioned earlier those points where you get that congestion in the 60s the the layering in the 80s allow it to sound more natural you're still going to get a little bit of the sibilance you're still going to get the vocal peaks that might bother people or kind of feel like pinpricks on the back of their eyes i feel like on that tightrope of vocals where it's just kind of on the edge of is it too bright or is it right where it needs to be to have that sparkly quality to it the 80s because of just a slight warmer tuning tend to stay on that tightrope longer and so I end up enjoying a lot of the vocals more often on the 80s. In combination with the fact that the songs tend to be less congested, it ends up being a relatively pleasant experience. So in regards to the dirty guitar, I feel like, because again, it's a little bit warmer, it's a little less congested, the 80s can handle it better. So I found myself enjoying rock music a little bit more. It felt a little less overwhelmed and natural in the way it presented music. The cymbals are still splashy, but it's more towards right on the border of tolerable. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's too much for me. The stage is deeper. Like I said, a little bit more layering to it. And so, in a lot of ways, this reminds me of the AKG K712 Pro in particular. This one has a lot of the strengths and weaknesses. It Obviously, it does not have the monstrously sized stage that the K712 had. It's not that big. It's not that wide. It's not that deep. It is sufficient for the music to play out and sound relatively naturally. But... For me, the 712s always had this special place where I listen to them on a tube amp. And there is a potential for magic or doom when listening to female vocals, where they could sound perfectly like sparkly and syrupy at the same time. They have a smooth quality, but there's enough energy to sound special. You can sometimes get that out of the ADX. It's not a guarantee that it'll sound that way the entire song. In fact, it probably won't. It will probably push your sibilance buttons a few times in the song. But you get it enough where listening to the song doesn't make you want to change headphones. The comfort will do that, in my opinion, but the sound quality won't. And so in the same songs, on uh, 04 Limited Sazby Squall, Still has issues with sibilance, but the congestion is gone. Everything a little, feels a little bit more cohesive, and I can just enjoy the song a little bit more on the 80X than on the 60X. For Elenium, this adds distance to the digital drums that come in at the 26 second mark. So there is still a little bit of energy to the the digital drums that make them kind of peek out from the from the mix but it doesn't feel like it's overwhelming the vocals and everything else that's going on i actually found it a relatively pleasant listen at the 40 second mark when the vocals come in kind of energetically you still get some graininess to it um but you know i i don't expect them to be perfect it is still a grado it's going to have the grado house sound and if this is the grado house sound Maybe if they make a model with a little bit more, more warmth to it, I'd be into it. Maybe. Not really my thing as it stands right now. Uh, and State Champs, again, it, it handles all of the, the trouble spots from the 60 a little bit better 
generally more pleasant to listen to. But for me, in the end, the tonal balance just isn't for me. The 80X is, is listenable. I, I wouldn't like throw these in the garbage. The 60X is, I really don't have enough patience for it to deal with all the, the, the shortcomings. But it's still not what I would choose to listen to on a wall of headphones. I feel like this is a step in a good direction. I'm just not sure that this is the launching point for all the higher end products from Grado. And it's still the sound quality on this doesn't overcome the comfort issues. This cable is awful. I mean, truly terrible. Whoever's decision it was to use a cable and a, I don't know, like a fabric, like a sleeving and really dense cable, so much to the point where it weighs more than the headphone itself almost, it was an awful decision. I mean, it's so inflexible that just I can't get this to rotate. So it's very hard to get it to sit flat on me. So this pl plastic piece is regularly just sitting on my chest uncomfortably. And the pads on these are not particularly great. And when they sit on my glasses, they're just basically pinching them into my face. So the adjustability on the ear cups is fine. I don't care. And I don't care if the headphones themselves are lightweight. The problem for me is that the cable has so much tension from the Y splitter. And because of the cables themselves are so dense and inflexible, it's just not comfortable enough to wear, even at a desk. I, I have no inclination to wear either of these, again, after shooting this review. So I'll probably be giving both of these away at some point. But yeah, I, they're okay. They're fine. They're eh, 60s, actually, I wouldn't really say is fine even. They're not even, barely serviceable. The 80s are fine. But otherwise, I, I, it's a hard pass for me. <laughs> On both of these, it's a hard pass for me. I was thinking all the while that I would rather be listening to my Sony's over here, the was it, MDR 1A M2s. I mean, yeah, it's this audio is amigo. Maybe I'll try another Grado at some point. I kind of like the 80. I'll see if anyone thinks that there's anything along that line, like the hemp. I don't know if that goes towards the 80 or the 60 voicing. But I probably won't be revisiting any of the uh, lower end or the economic or budget line of Grados. I'm, I'm kind of done with it. It's put me off. So I'll be going to other things, maybe IEM or Philips or something else, or Sony even. But yeah, I'm done here. So save your money. For the money, I would check out the JVC, you know, for 30 bucks, the, the HARX 700 save a ton of money <laughs> or any number of other headphones heck even the sony mdrs the uh, studio monitors or the uh, sennheiser uh, hd280 pros any of those are getting within the budget of these and i would rather listen to either of them so thanks for watching i hope i'll catch you next time and uh, hopefully i didn't offend too many grado fans out there but this just ain't for me i'll see you next time Bye.